many model train lovers would class G-Scale as the pinnacle of modelling. It's often out of the reach for many people due to the cost and space it requires to run these large styles of railways. At my local hobby shop I came across an affordable remote controlled G-Scale train, which on closer inspection has quite a few surprises tucked away. By purchasing this train it forced me into a huge learning curve of setting up large scale railways. As I found this model train presented to me a number of obstacles before it was ready to roam the backyard railway I built. This video will detail my thoughts about this very inexpensive G-Scale train. Let's kick off by getting our heads around how this G-Scale train compares to other popular train sets on the market. This Hornby 00 train set costs around 100 Australian dollars. This Lego train set costs around 300 Australian dollars. This new Quitter G-Scale train set costs around 200 Australian dollars. All sets have trains, track accessories and controllers. For an insight into how large G-Scale is, let's peruse the trains and rolling stock from those three train sets. The massive difference between 00 scale and G-Scale is obvious. Even a large Lego scale train looks small when compared to G-Scale. There's nothing stopping you from setting up any of these train sets as a garden railway. G-Scale tends to be best suited for garden railway environments. And the G in G-Scale does not stand for garden. This G-Scale train set was bundled as a package deal by my local hobby store around Christmas time as an ultimate Christmas tree train. I purchased it purely out of curiosity because I noticed that the trains looked fairly detailed inside the boxes. I also noticed pictures of a high speed train in the same series and different bits of rolling stock. The instruction manual is comprehensive but it's clearly a copy and paste from a remote control car instructions and there's loads of chinglish going on as well. I did peruse the company's website and I can see their heritage is remote controlled cars. Finding more of these trains to purchase has been more difficult than I expected. If you're a detailed Nazi like me, this train will not disappoint. Like so many inexpensive RC toys from China, this train has a level of detailing which I feel is its strongest card. I've seen in the shops quite a few other low-end G-Scale trains and they never have this level of detailing. I would love to do a comparison with some LGB trains, but I don't have any. All I know is to pull a train set like this in LGB it would cost you quite a sum of money. Maybe there's someone out there who could quote a price in what this would cost if it was LGB. But I'm pretty sure those who are paying out for the quality LGB stuff are certainly getting their money's worth. The rechargeable battery is hidden away inside the boiler and it's a 7.2 volt 1800 milliamp NICAD battery. The train's on switch is a toolbox on the water tank. There are two channels available to power the train Selection of these is made inside the cabin. You can also power the train without remote control via these buttons as well. The remote control has a cheap feel to it and from here you can select a channel so your controller starts communicating with the train. I notice a music button but let's not touch that yet. From a single joystick I can select forward and reverse and it does seem like the speed is proportional to the control input. Although it does feel like full speed is achieved with very little control input. Well I knew I shouldn't have touched that sound button, it's got a generic sound chip in there and we've heard that so many times on El Cheapo Chinese toy trains. Now what's a bit weird here, it came with one traction tyre and if you look carefully there you can see it and what's even stranger is this traction tyre disappeared at some point, where it is I do not know. Hopefully I've given you a summary of what this engine looks like, let's have a look at some rolling stock. When I purchased this train set it was bundled with one passenger car and two freight cars. Just like the locomotive, these pieces of rolling stock display a huge amount of detail and incorporate many moving parts. I just wonder how they will ride the rails 
as they do seem fairly light. It's all a plastic fantastic affair, but hey, I'm so overwhelmed by detail, I'm just hoping all this works out. Will the light rolling stock be the bugbear of this train system? The track pack comes with 16 curves, 4 straights and 2 sets of points. I purchased more track packs for $40 as I found G-Scale really needs a large layout and these track pieces are in fact fairly short. What I found is the track system has a few problems which play out later in the video. And to make my tracks look more realistic I added some silver to the part which would be metal on this track. The strangest part to this train set was in the track packs came this set of accessories and it's some figures and trees and signs and stuff which really doesn't gel with the detail quality that I see on the rest of the train set. It would have been far better off if they left all of this rubbish out of the track packs. Mind you one aspect of it did make me laugh, there's a guy with an exploder and he's got some explosives as well, but look where his explosives are. Let's just hope he hasn't got a wire connected from that exploder to those explosives or he's going to blow off you know what. Well outside I'm starting to lay in some track. Nice big G scale track. There's a loop there and there's a couple of points that cross the loop and it goes around behind the tree to another loop out the back. The area I've chosen is fairly level although I have to dig in some of the track and there's some other parts that I've got to raise up. And I've just put soil in and like the real railways you know you sort of shake 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 and it raises the track up and also I found this excellent medium which just looks like blue metal that you find on rail tracks at the moment I'm just messing around with a look but I'll tell you what that looks fantastic that's a perfect scale uh, for G-scale there's medium here and I will show you what it is I went out to a very large aquarium shop out in Canley Vale which is west of Sydney and of course aquarium gravel tends to be nice and pebbly and roundish but what I was after was something a little bit, little bit finer and that's what they had there and he, the aquarium man was quite surprised I was interested in something like this I didn't tell him what I was doing but he said it's not often bought for people who do aquariums it's perfect for that blue metal look that you find is ballast in railways as you can see I've got a level out there and I think it's really important to get this track level as best I can, also got some carriages out and I'm running them around just to get a feel for any tilt that's in the tracks and I think it's pretty crucial that the tracks are set up right so I can give this train a good fair spin I'll tell you what, once you play with G-Scale it's really hard to go back to anything smaller again and when my son sees this he is going to get hyper excited he's going to love seeing this train out in the garden can't wait to do some of those camera in the train shots. Choo -woo. I know this old magpie is fairly curious about this new development. And what my plans are, I will leave this layout outside set up for a year. We're coming up to the summertime and I'm curious to see how all this survives outside in the environment. Well, I've got two fine railway engineers here who are putting in the tracks and getting those soil, soil banks up Dad. around the tracks. How's it going there with the soil? Yeah. Good? Dad. Getting the soil in around the tracks? Look at that. All that hard work. Woo! Ah. What I've been doing on this curve here, which needs a fair bit of an embankment to raise it up, is we put a whole heap of soil oh, down. Dad. Put your soil down, whoa, and then you give the tracks a bit of a tap and it tamps it all down. And the funny thing is that as I've been putting the soil in, the track's been raising up and getting to a level that I require to come off that bend there to go around this area which has got an embankment because it's a bit of a lower part of the garden. And it goes around and back to the high spot. We're making a train track for my little brother to play on every day. I think he's not helping much, but um, yeah, I was using the soil. Dad set out this track. There were some roots in the way, so hey! Daddy, Daddy cut some roots here and around the tree here. He cut some here and around down here. 
Yeah. It's really exciting when this track's done. Yeah. Yeah. For my little brother. And it's a great idea to put um this uh soil wall on. Then yeah. And I was thinking of oh, we put um a fair over here on the side. Hey, good a fair. Yeah. I was gonna put a dinosaur park and a and a bulldozer yeah. area yeah, as well. So people can watch the trains go by and you might put a little park here. Well, fair enough. And yeah. I think this project's getting bigger by the day. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to tell you how many days I've spent to get to this point. I think it was... Too many days. I'm not a railway engineer, but what I've done on the corners here is I put a bit of a tilt tilt in. And yesterday I did have the train out running around. And I noticed that there's a few areas which need picking up. Especially around the corner, it's getting a bit rock and rolly around that corner there. And I was able to go in with more soil and fix it up. Oh yes, another day, another dollar, and the works continue out here on this G-scaled railway. I'll put an embankment there because I fear it'll be a wash away once we get a bit of rain. It's a lovely bird, isn't it? And I've got to the point where I will run the train around and see where the problems lie on this track. You know, people often say to me, geez, Leo, I want to try to upload more videos than you do. Well, it's videos like this that chew up heaps of time, and that's why you don't see many from me. Well, oh, thank you for a spin and the circuit and the back bit. Cross double points. Come around another set of points. Oh, front wheels derailed. Fail. Let's look at those set of points that are causing trouble. I can see they're not closing up properly. I can't get them to go any further across. Let's run the train up. I'm pretty sure that front wheel is not tackling that point correctly. It's off. Yeah, okay. Oh, the pains of railway engineering. I might have to swap that set of points out because they're not closing up and it's causing trouble. I've had a look at another two sets of points that I've got and I think I can see where the problem is. These don't seem to close up properly as well. I mean, I want to see that completely hard up against there. What looks to be the problem is it's stopping, it's been restricted by this piece of plastic here or that bit of detail there is stopping the track from closing all the way up. It actually collides in there and it's the same on this other set. And I bet you it's the same with the set which is causing the problem I mean, I can see it because I've got it in my hands here. It's probably hard to see it on camera. Again, that's not closing up. I need. I want to see it like this. Um, it's colliding in here. So that track needs to be altered. Here's that troublesome set of points. And I'm going to come in with my knife and just take away a little bit of detail in there. And I know you guys want to see all the gory detail. Yeah. That sort of plastic is actually quite soft. Let's see how it looks now. I've actually had a few stabs of that now, and um, I think it's closing up a bit better than it was. Let's give that a go, eh? Okay, let's give her a spin over those points. Victory! I've been running it around a fair bit, and I'm actually having some troubles with the little wheels. I don't know what they're called, but the little Ford wheels. And they've got a spring on there. And there's the same set at the back. And I've just got a feeling that, that spring has to be stronger. It just seems like these wheels um, tend to want to get or come off and derail off the rails way too easily. I might do a bit of re-engineering here and put some stronger springs in there as I was close up so you can see the mechanism that pushes those wheels against the tracks. Yes, of course you can see we're back in the workshop and I'm going to come in and fix this wheel here. It's um, relatively simple. There was a little screw there. If I pull that off, it reveals that. And then I can pull that whole front wheel assembly away. And to change the spring out, I notice that there is a little screw right here. So let's sort this wheel spring out. Well, in front of you there, that's the spring that was in there before. 
Okay, it's very soft, it does nothing, and I'm going to put in a spring with a little bit more body to it. Hopefully that will get that wheel set, I'm pushing down on my very uneven garden railway. Okay, that new spring is in there, and that front wheel set is feeling a lot more beefy. There's going to be a lot more pressure down on those rails. This actual whole train is actually very heavy. I don't think I've ever pointed it out in this video so far. I didn't put it on the scales, I should have done. But with the battery set and the actual train, it's mighty heavy. And now I'm going to move on, and I've got to do this little wheel at the back here. I don't know what these wheels are called because I'm not a train nerd. Yes, it's far too weak that. Let's get something a bit beefy in there. Wow, lucky I kept that bunch of springs I thought I'd never use. Boing, 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 boing. And the other thing I've done is I've given a spray of lanolin to a lot of the running gear here. And I actually opened it up in there and I gave the gears a bit of a spray. And I've got it running nice and smooth now. That's far better than before. It was feeling a bit lumpy before. Now reverse. And back to forward. I can even get it nice and slow. Back to forward. No more lumpy lumpies. Whoa! That's coming the end of day six of mucking around this train. Let's try it on the tracks again. And putting that lubricant on has made a big difference to the way this train works on the rails. It's got a real smooth feel to it. But I've still got to get the track right. I'm still having problems with parts of the track. I was going to say, if someone said to me, oh, it took me a couple of weeks to sort out my G-scale railway layout, you know what, I'm going to believe them now. Fail. Well, day six comes to an end, I wonder how much I'll get done for tomorrow. Will I finish the track? Still a few problem areas. Yeah, it's going all right. These are 10? That one? No. That's just a carriage. That could be Clarabelle. That's Clarabelle. Welcome to day seven of this epic. Last night, I watered the uh, tracks. So the soil is, it's not dust anymore. It's, it's sort of crept in and it's let the tracks settle in. And finally, I can get this train to run around without any major mishaps. So it looks like that now. The track feels nice and firm in that soil and I'm yet to put my gravel in there to make it look good. You're probably wondering what the remote control is doing sitting in the middle of the track. Well, if I don't have it there, the train will stop at a blind spot. Seems that remote control has to be within eyesight of the train going around the track. Let's try a carriage now, seeing how it goes. How's this for a bit of shunting work? Yeah! Let's do some more shunting, yay! Whoa, and go, go, go. You know, I keep having problems now that I've added a carriage on, and that's that little back wheel there. Keeps wanting to jump off, and as it goes around the layout, it'll jump off for a bit and then it'll jump back on at the set of points. And it's hard to see because you can't see it uh, when the train's running around, but you can certainly hear when it comes off, it sort of hits the sleepers and makes that, that rackety sound. I've got the iris right open for a very good reason because I need you to see the wheels and that middle wheel actually will jump up uh, on the corners and then it comes back and lays back down on the straights. I'll give you a little demo, just going to a corner very slowly here, you'll see the wheel rise up. There's a wheel risen up above the tracks and they go forward and you'll see it lay back down. There it goes. I've got to a point where I've spent far too much time stuffing around getting this track done and I'm putting my 
fake ballast in, which of course was the stuff I showed way back in the video. I purchased from the aquarium shop and it looks fantastic. It looks so, so real. Got my little helper out here, he wants to put some ballast in as well. Just amazing what difference it makes once you get a little bit of that miniature looking ballast in. I mean there it is there, huge difference in believability there. Well I've done all my miniature ballast and now I'm just running the train around just to get those little bits of gravel away from the flange area of the wheels on the track and it's starting to look pretty good. The train's starting to behave itself on the track finally. I'll tell you what, there's a fair bit to getting a bit of G-Star track laid down in the backyard and have a train running on it. It's a lot of work. The worst part is the remote control needs to be right near the train for it to work. It's just stopped over there and, and I'm over here. If I go and walk near it, it'll kick off again. Oh, how boring. But we're getting there. Looking pretty good. No, it doesn't like it when it goes from one curve around to the other curve, so I'm just going to spray a bit of something slippery, give it a bit of a flange lubrication. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and spray all the corners inside there, so we'll flange has got some lubrication. You know, it's actually been a huge learning curve for me to sort this out. And I'm not into trains, some of you may think I really am, but I should have probably gone and perused what people do with G-scale trains before I leapt in and put some track down. Probably needed a big cement pad under the rail there. And when I go to shoot this with my high speed, 120 frame per second camera, you'll probably see the track is all over the shop. But that's gonna make the train look more realistic, I feel. Oh boy. What a video. That's the battery life. It's been running around for about 15 minutes now, all by itself. And I feel it's starting to slow. Coming around the mountain, there she comes. Maybe it'll go for another five minutes. And remember, I'm leaving this track laid in for a year. We'll come back, we'll see how it's fared out in the elements. Once I see the train's still working, I know my son's going to play this a fair bit. And I'm pretty sure he's going to give it a working out that I'm never going to be able to. And I can deal with a fair bit of debris falling on the track I've noticed. There's some little bits of, I don't know what there. Then it just goes over it and munches it. Yeah, the batteries are just about cactus now. Struggling to get round. It's been about 20 minutes of running around like this. Not bad from a battery charge. Come on, you can do it. Whoa. Well, it's an absolute no-brainer that my son loves this giant G-Scar train out in the backyard. And he's only three years old, but he's been exposed to a fair bit of train stuff in his short life. He's had Hornby sets in front of him. He's had all sorts of Thomas and Friends and Chuggington train sets in front of him. But I can tell you what, he's never had anything like this in front of him. And what is interesting is I noticed that he really okay. loves the detail. And so do I. I think that's the most appealing aspect of this train set. But when there's trouble, he's a little bit too young to sort it out and to reset the train back on the track, so I've got to come in. And even for me, it can be a bit of a fiddly job to get all those wheels back onto the tracks. And get. And like any boy, and because he's a boy, he loved to put stuff on the tracks and have the train fly into it. Want to do a choo, choo crash? Yeah. Let's go. And hey, you know, I don't mind a bit of that as well. Oh no, it's going to be a crash. Oh no!
you know, it took quite a few days to get this track down, but it was sort of worth it because it's such a fantastic looking train set when it's all up and running. Yeah. Wheels, I know. Let's go. Passengers are waiting. Well, I've been mucking around with this G-Scale train for about a month now since I started the video. Not that I've been on it full time, but I've certainly spent quite a few weeks stuffing around with it. And I think it's worthwhile me having a few final words about this G-Scale train. Well, the first thing to note is that it actually struggles to pull its full allotment of rolling stock that came in the set. It seems to much prefer to pull one or two carriages only. And like I said before, on the curves, that middle wheel uh, rides upwards and I always feel on the curves this train has extra labour and extra restrictions going on because of that middle wheel. And now that I've taken one carriage away, you can see the extra speed the train has on this very simple circular track. So certainly one thing I could say against this train is that it's a little bit underpowered, it needs more grunt if you want to pull more carriages. And outside that garden railway I built is no way perfect, there's a bit of ups and downs going on and the train tends to struggle a bit more out there than it does on this nice flat circle that I've got in my garage. The other curious fact that I've noticed with this train is in reverse, it has a lot more grunt. It's far more powerful if I send it into reverse than it is in forward. So I'd say there'd be something a bit weird about the way that it's set up inside. And it might be worth taking a bit of a quick look outside of the track because there's a few things that have happened to it in the last couple of weeks now that it's been in for a while. So we'll head outside and see what's going on. Well okay, the track has been in for about three weeks now and you can see that a lot of that ballast has well, moved away. I wouldn't say it's washed away because we haven't had any rain and there's a bit of grass growing up through there but there's something which is going on which sort of surprises me. Around the points area I put pins into the track and they go through the sleepers and I'll pull one up so you can see one. Just a bit of coat hanger wire bent around and I did that because I wanted some stability in these sections of track because I know that they were causing me a bit of trouble and once I pin them down the trouble seemed to go away. And up the back straight as I call it I also put some pins here there's that little bit of an S that happens through here. Notice that all of that ballast, that fake ballast that I've got there can be seen but if I move along a bit you'll see that all the ballast seems to disappear and what's been happening is on a hot day and I had a few now because we're coming into our summertime this piece of track will actually bow right up and it needs to be pinned down and I didn't expect to see so much expansion going on because we've got a piece of track here which is trapped by that pin and as I come along here this is actually all free and when it gets hot it bows right up and what makes it worse in the afternoon there's a big shadow that casts here of a tree so there's a section which is in sunlight getting hot and a section which is quite cool from the shadow and that makes it even worse. So here I am on the back straight there's those construction vehicles and you can see a lot of that ballast has gone and none of this corn here was pinned down so what's happened here is when it got hot all this track expanded and when it expands it tends to get up in the air and then it cools down and it lays back down so all of that ballast that I had has gone to the bottom and I'm going to have to come in and put pins all the way through this track. Anyway I've got a few final things to say about the locomotive so I'll head back into the garage. Okay so what has my weeks of toils with this remote control train taught me. Let's have a close look and finish this off. What is a surprise? I actually found a mini-me of this train. I think this is a German company. I'm only saying this because on the back there's a whole lot of Arktun and German stuff there I can't read. Um, I paid $12.99, let's call that $13 for that toy. Reminds me very much of Ertl toys to be honest. Let's have a closer look. Well there's that toy train there. I know a lot of people when they sighted the big G-Scar train and I first made a glimpse of it a few videos back they said lots of things about Germany 
and I'm not going to try and pretend I know things about trains because I don't, I just do toy reviews but I think this is a German toy I think this is a German train, I'm sure the train people are going to come in and inform me of everything that I don't know but it always looks cute if you can get a mini me going next to something large and my first thought when I saw that mini me train would be to come in and glue it onto the RC unit then you've got something that relates the RC unit to the train that you're driving one disappointing factor is the remote control and how it loses command so easily. I think the problem is that the antenna lays inside and if you look inside the cabin it actually pokes through and you can see it. But then again the Lego remote control train suffers from some fairly lax remote control control. Let's have a look underneath at some more problems. Way back in the video this train had one traction tyre on this wheel. You know what I actually found that traction tyre. Here it is here I have got no idea what happened to it. Um, it doesn't need it, so let's throw it away. I tend to put a lot of lube on this train, be it WD-40, be it whatever, it needs it. Don't worry, it doesn't affect the traction of the wheels on the rails. In fact, I have not seen this train perform any wheel slippage at all. As I noted before, I have painted my rails, and what's been happening is that the paint has been layering onto these wheels here. And maybe that's what's been stopping the wheels from slipping. Maybe that paint is acting as some sort of weird traction device. What I notice is the paint comes off the rails and it layers up onto the wheels. As I pointed out earlier in this video, this middle wheel rides up on the corners, lays back down on the straights. My five cents on this, this is be far better off being a flangeless wheel. But I'm not a rail expert, maybe you could say something on this as well. Flangeless, I feel, would be much better. Earlier in the video, you saw me changing springs in this train on those little wheels at the front and back. On the front, I went with something fairly stiff. Uh, I changed things around many times. You only saw me do it once. I actually went through it quite a few times. On the back, I went with something fairly weak, which wasn't that different to what was already in there. Um, I still think the back ones need fiddling, but it probably has more to do with my wonky outside railway, which is by no means perfect. I did shoot a whole bunch of slow motion video of this beautiful train, and I used the wagon there in front of you with a camera on it, and I will quickly show you how I put the camera on this wagon. Got some really great shots. Underneath there are four screws that hold the tank on. I basically took the screws out and all that top detailing can be taken off. There's also a bit of bottom detailing that you don't need as well. And there's one of my amazing Casio high speed cameras. Only a couple hundred bucks and they do magic things. And look at the way I've held it on. Really simple. Blue tack. Nice and flexible that way. I can change the angle really easily. And um, you notice when you watch the video of it going around the rails you will see the hose there, the brake hose. You won't see that coupling because I've had to reformat uh, the image here to widescreen. But what's so nice about G-Scale is because it's so large, mounting cameras on it is really easy and you can get some really nice shots if you get down low and pretend you're a passenger. And just on German stuff, does anybody know why I hear some people in Germany call this an Englander? What's the story there, guys? Well, this review became well, as big as G-Scale, it's a massive review for me. It took ages to make. Because it doesn't feature Thomas, it's going to go nowhere. But if you lasted this long, I thank you very much for doing so. I'll be uploading the slow motion footage of this train as a separate video. You can see the time on this video has completely blown out. I learned something about G-Scale. I learned something about cheap RC stuff as well. And I hope you've learned something as well. Again, thank you and goodbye. Just had a crash. Unfortunately, I missed that one. Let's go. And go. Never buy a second hand camera from me because look how I treat them. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Train wins.